and you. He said, thou shalt and thou shalt not. He said, thou shalt not be a faggot. He said, thou shalt not be a lesbian. That's what the Lord said. So that's what we are here to tell you. The boys were gathered on the steps and they, I don't know why Nathan Phillips chose Nick Sandman. philosophies and doctrines and start worshiping the true and living power which which his name is Yahweh. that's who's the, the most high god that's right the most high god his name is Yahweh. how come everybody's picking on that poor racist kid why is everybody picking on that poor racist kid that's when the cameras started rolling it's between 4 and 5 Friday afternoon. This video posted on YouTube by John Duncan. So on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, you essentially had three groups of people. You had a lot of Native Americans. You had a lot of Covington Catholic MAGA boys. And then you also had the black Israelites. Um, I think he would have targeted anyone, but maybe it was because Nick Sandman had the courage to look this man in the face and he tried to defuse the situation by not reacting and by standing there respectfully. So those are the three groups that we need to pay attention. The MAGA kids came to de demonstrate against their opposition to abortion, right? So they're Covington Catholic, so Covington, Kentucky. They went to Washington, D.C. to say, hey, I'm really mad about abortion. After this dance, we see what appears to be several teenagers. The group of teens begins to grow, so too the tension with racist messages spewed by the black Israelites. A bunch of in incest babies. Now, I was born in Covington, Kentucky, St. Elizabeth South, in the old German town called Sanford Town in 1982, but after my birthday, I took a look around, I was like, nah, and I just went to the countryside to throw myself into the chains of oppression so I can slay myself in the tobacco fields. Now, you got to remember that the Ohio River is the Mason-Dixon line, so you get past the Ohio River, well, that was freedom for when there was slavery. So Ohio River is the Mason-Dixon line, and the traditions have come over. They've spilt over. Twelve and a half minutes after their initial confrontation, one of the five can be heard taunting students in the crowd. Yeah, I want to build a wall for Mexico. The racist remarks continue for more than 18. The demographics of Cincinnati is 49% white, 45% black, 3% Hispanic, 2% Asian. This is the 2010 U.S. Census numbers. So. 49% white, 45% black, 3% Hispanic, 2% Asian. So essentially, mostly whites and blacks in Cincinnati, almost 50-50. Almost 50% white, 50% black in Cincinnati. Now just go right across the Ohio River, the demographics of Covington, Kentucky, this, if you ever walked around Covington, you would, there's a distinct white supremacist feel to the whole thing. Now, Not as it first appeared the other way around. You are fake news. He walked among the group as they appeared to chant to his drum beats. Phillips said he believed he had to do something to protect the black Israelites group from the boys. Now, the demographics of Covington, Kentucky is 87% white and 10% black and 0.5% Asian and 0.25% Native American. Now, that's very ironic. 0.25% Native American, the name Kentucky, is a Shawnee word, which means dark and bloody river. A group of teens harassing and mocking him in the nation's capital. Here's the video sparking outrage on social media right now. Nathan Phillips. So the name of Kentucky is a Native American word, but Covington is 87% white, 10% black. So there's a shit ton more whites, and there's a handful of blacks and not much more going on in Covington. So 87% white, 10% black when you just go across the Ohio River and it's 49% white, 45% black. That means there's 35% less black people in Covington and there is 40 something percent, 45% more white folks in Covington. So for some reason, even though Cincinnati is basically 50 50, go to Covington and the ratio to white to black is 9 to 1. 9 to 1. And there's three bridges there. There's no border wall. There's nothing impeding travel. So what else could it be? 
Why is there so many more white people, so few black folks in Covington when Cincinnati is essentially 50-50? It has a white supremacist feel to it because the culture is white supremacist. A group of about five people identifying themselves as black Israelites are on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Nearby, the end of the Indigenous People's March. 22 minutes, some of whom wore Make America Great Again hats. These students, they're starting to get this mob mentality. And what did you see that made you think that it was a mob mentality? Well, 100, over 100 individuals, and all of them just hollering things out together. I want y'all to also remember that James Alex Fields, that guy who ran over Heather Heyer, he came from Boone County. Boone County, Kenton County, Campbell County, these are the three top counties in Kentucky. So this is just right next door. James Alex Fields, you got a Nazi, right, who came out of Boone County. It's a Greek word that goes by the name of religio. It means to hold back, with strain, and separate. You know, right? That's, That's right. right. You got Christianity. That's why you have so many denominations of Christianity. You got Baptist. You got Lutheran. Now, Kentucky was in a peculiar place during the Civil War. Lincoln said he can only hope to have God, but he must have Kentucky. He has to have Kentucky. Strategically, militarily, he understood the importance of Kentucky. And Kentucky did the right side, did the right thing. They were on the right side of history. The governor, Mariah Magathan, wasn't going to fight against the Confederates. He declared neutrality. And then the Kentucky legislature kicked the governor out as long as he got to choose who his successor was. And so Kentucky was on the right side of history. Kentucky fought for the Union. Kentucky fought for Abraham Lincoln, for the United States of America against slavery. And they were screaming horrible, horrible things that I will not repeat to our children, to children, not adults. They were screaming them at children. This continued. And the boys asked if they could do one of their school cheers because... 75,000 Kentuckians fought for the Union when 25,000 Kentuckians fought for the Confederates, for slavery, for white supremacy. So one out of four whites in Kentucky fought for the Confederates. But three out of four Kentuckians, 75%, fought for the Union. And then 25,000 black Kentuckians, not only did they fight for the Union and for Lincoln and for the... United States of America and against slavery in general, but they fought for their own freedom. The 25,000 black Kentuckians are my favorite group of people in the Civil War when it comes to the people who fought in Kentucky, because in order to get their own freedom, black Kentuckians had to pick up a gun. As soon as they pick up a gun and they're willing to fight for themselves, then they got their freedom. We did. And the first people who hit you uh, with uh, verbal barbs were the black Hebrew Israelites, and what were they saying? Well, we were standing there and we looked, and all of a sudden they turned their attention to our group. So, Kentucky was part of the Union. A lot of the culture of Kentucky is that it's southern, that it's south, which makes no sense if you look at a map. Kentucky is situated right in the middle, very centrally located. The south? How is that the south? They were a border state. So they were allowed to have slavery, but they were with the Union. So Kentucky fought with the Union the entire time. But as soon as the Civil War ended, after the Appomattox Courthouse, that's when it said that Kentucky joined the Confederacy by electing Confederates into office. And they kept re-electing Confederates until you had William Justice Goebel, until you had a German Kentuckian say, wait a second, what are we doing here? I thought the Confederacy, I thought we defeated the Confederacy. White man gave you. It means seven. You're not savages. You are the children of When I started going forward and that mass of groups of people started separating and, and, and separating and moving aside to allow me to move out of the way or to proceed, this young fella put himself in front of me and wouldn't move. You got, you got uh, Jehovah's Witness. Episcopalian. Adventist, Episcopalian. All these damn religions. The Lord on the... ...emerged from multiple sources showing the unfiltered scene. 
Video showing three different groups involved, including a small group of men from the Hebrew Israelites shouting obscenities at the groups of students standing on the stairs, including cracker, the N-words, pedophile, future school student shooters, and a lot more that I don't even feel comfortable saying on air. So what do I think about this video? You got the MAGA Covington Catholic kids, the abortion extremists, the black Israelites, and then you had the indigenous people's dance. You had those three groups of people at the Lincoln Memorial. I think everybody is wrong on this. So Nathan Phillips, he was the Native American. He approaches the kid, the MAGA kid. So Nathan Phillips is banging on the drum, and he approaches him, walks about 30 feet right into the kid's face. So who approached who? That matters. That matters. Who approaches who? You're standing right here, and then somebody approaches you while you're just standing, minding your own business. Who approaches who? Was, that mattered when it came to George Zimmerman, when he murdered Trayvon Martin. George Zimmerman approached Trayvon Martin. So Trayvon Martin had a right to stand his ground. He had no duty to retreat. So the kid, the MAGA kid, and I forget his name, it doesn't matter because really the media did jump on board on this and they got it wrong. But not 100% wrong, and I'll explain that some other time. <laughs> but the kid, the MAGA kid, the Covington Catholic kid, he wasn't moving at all. So he was non-violently resisting. The drummer, Nathan Phillips, is banging on the drum and he goes right up to the kid's face and he's just sitting there pounding on the drum real loud, being a dick got into his space. He's beating his drum and singing an American Indian protest song. And this was on Friday on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial when he saw a clash erupting between a group of teenage students and four African American young men preaching about the Bible. A video posted on social media appeared to show the group of boys surrounding and taunting Native American activist and military veteran Nathan Phillips. But we're learning there's more to this than the... Right. And he's banging on it, and he's singing it, and the kid's just, you know, just kind of smiling, just smirking. But I guess he's confused. He didn't really know what to do. So he was nonviolent. That's very Gandhi-like. The kid has a right to stand his ground. He doesn't have a duty to retreat. So while the kid was like Gandhi, on one hand, Nathan Phillips is kind of like MLK, because MLK believed in militant nonviolence. So he walked right up to the person, banging the drum right in the kid's face, wasn't violent, but it could have been threatening. They could have interpreted like, what the hell? You're sitting there hitting this thing. I mean, they could have just started hitting that. And he's right there in his face. Not the true Jews. Imposters. 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 Some of them are. You can't say all of them. You're right. You're right. That's true. That's true. No, that's true, brother. Sandman was shown in the first video standing close to Phillips as Phillips continues to beat his drum. In a statement, Salmon says he never interacted with Phillips. To be honest, I was startled and confused as to why he had a... The way I feel about things, this is my body. You cannot put your hands on my body. And not only can you not put your hands on my body, but you can't put your hands in my space. If I could reach you, then, you know, depending on if you're bigger or smaller, but if I could reach you, essentially you could reach me. And if you could reach me, then that means you can hurt me. So this is my body. This is my space. You cannot touch me. You cannot attack me. You cannot do anything. So I don't want you to touch me. I also don't want you to get into my space. And I believe that's the law. The law says that this is your space. So if somebody comes right up to your face, I mean, you have, you know, that's, uh, feels like that's, you know, something that's a challenge of some sort. And I don't know why they jumped to make a statement. And as a parent and as a Catholic person that has supported our diocese, I am very, very... They touched him. And that would have been the, the thing that the group of people would have needed to spring on me. Hmm. Congress... Right? I'm in your space. What are you going to do about it? So violence could happen. Violence could have happened because he was within that kid's space. Now, the kid chose not to, you know, didn't uh, do anything. He didn't uh, taunt. He didn't say a word. He just sat there. And that's totally okay. That's neutral. In a free country, you're allowed to, you know, shout a bunch of shit. You're also allowed to not say shit. And you could just stand right there. Now, some spots the subway, public buses, folks are bunched up together, so you can't really have, you know, all the space in the world. But where there's plenty of room, when you got the entire Lincoln Memorial Mall, that ought to give 
folks plenty of space. Right, I'm not talking. No, that's what I'm trying to tell right, you, brother. Okay. Listen, we're a remnant. The law says he scattered us to the four corners of the earth. Right. So there's a remnant of us in everywhere you go. If you have an encounter between Kentucky high school students and a Native American elder that triggered nationwide outrage. The incident happened Friday afternoon at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington. Initial so if one could have been said to have been provocative, Nathan Phillips was the one being provocative. So Nathan Phillips went up to the, you know, the kid's face. And so I actually believe that the, I don't know anything about the kid. I don't know what he was doing before or afterwards or, you know, I'll explain what, you know, the fear is. There's a fear that these MAGA kids, right, if you have a rooster that lays an egg on the top of a rooftop, which way is it going to go? At any point in any time, you could do good and you could do evil. So if you could do evil and you could do good, I could see a circumstance where these MAGA kids, you know, circled the black Israelites and eventually just kept encroaching and then eventually, you know, somebody does something. So it... To, you know, imagine anything. Nothing's outside the realm of possibility. That's right. Of one of the students told CBS News the boys were told not to engage and instead were doing high school chants. Student Nick Sandman said the boys did not shout racial epithet. And they were singled out, and I believe partially because of the color of their skin, they were targeted. Joe, why, why would... So these kids are just on a precipice. Right? You got a bunch of white kids and they all support the president. Clearly they must be bad people. And so they were, you know, attacked by the media. The media jumped up on down on essentially four minutes of video. And it's just him standing there making it look like he was blocking Nathan Phillips from going to his destination. Nathan Phillips wasn't going to walk up the steps. Nathan Phillips didn't need to go through the crowd. He intensely went through the crowd. So, you know, he provoked this entire conversation, and I appreciate this conversation, but Nathan Phillips was in the wrong, and that MAGA kid was in the right. Social media. This child molesting and this priest right there. Right. Let's make America great again. A bunch of child molesting Look at all these dusty crackers with that racist garbage on. Look at these dirty crackers. That's right. That's right. Here come Gad. Here come Gad. So what is right and what is wrong? What do we have a right? You know, we have a right to speak and say whatever we want, but can you just sit there and cuss people out? Can, can you threaten people? Can you say you're going to? So I think that we should have this conversation. So if you have a right to speak, you have a right to protest, you have a right to not retreat, so how does all this shake out? In Harlan County, USA, when Kentucky was great, the gun thugs made sure that the workers could get through these scabs. You're going to go in China, our people, there's going to be people that look Chinese. So the union, they were trying to block the incoming cars with their bodies, with vehicles. But as soon as the gun thugs of the coal corporation saw that this thing was happening, they enforced the right of commerce. You can't stop or impede commerce, right? So you have a right to one's own body. You could stand in the middle of the street. You could stand in the middle of the interstate. But you have a right to commerce, too, so people want to get, but then for a protest to be effective, you want to stop the commerce. So what do you do? So the Harlan County USA folks, the union, when they were trying to block the road, the gun thug says, you can't block anybody. And they put the gun up and said that you can't block anybody. So, you know, that's one perspective of they were trying to get to a specific destination. They got on sweat hoods and everything. Right. Make America great sweat hoods so and everything. This is what you right. call your new politicians right here. Right. These okay. the these the people so, like said, who's going to fuck your country up in a minute, so uh, 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 Mr. White Man. Disheartened and saddened that they rushed to judgment by not supporting one of their own schools and their own people in the diocese. And I do not believe the school made that statement, the administration. I believe it was made by the diocese. Yeah, well, that, Jill, now that we know all the facts, you know, we're all parents, so many people. I think a lot of liberals and Democrats and uh, just a lot of extremists, a lot of, there's some, uh, I've heard some people say that what the solution for all the white horrors have been is for white genocide. And I can't get down with white genocide because you're going to define me as white and then you're going to say I'm not allowed to exist. So the liberals, 
a lot of people, Ann Coulter says it looks like, you know, the liberals don't care about white men. Well, what the MAGA hat boys did is they put a bunch of white men in a group. And so I think that there's fear in both ways, right? The heart of the white man is fear, but then the heart of everybody else that's around sees this and they think, oh, that could be a formidable force. Here come Gad! Yeah. Look, look at our Make America Great Again hats! Look at the hats! Look. Those are going to be the leaders, the judges, the cops, the people that's taken over society. And so we got to make sure that these kids are actually educated. They're being brainwashed in, you know, Catholicism. And they're also, you know, shut up, sit down. So they're being taught to just be obedient. They can't really, um, you know, they're, we're not churning out ignoramuses. We're churning out savages. A bunch of in incest babies. A bunch of babies made out of incest. The biggest terrorist on the face of this earth is the pale-faced man, woman, and child. And those black Israelites are being racist as fuck. They were so fucking racist and homophobic. They were rude. They're a piece of shit motherfuckers. So they call themselves the black Israelites. Get into their philosophy because I don't know exactly what their philosophy is. Uh, but they're sitting there saying that God is not called God or Allah, but it's called Yahama Shama Dama Dama Dama. So Philosophies and doctrines and start worshiping the true and living power, which which his name is Yahweh. And. So I could, if I took another step, I would be putting my, my person into his presence, into his space, and I would. That's who's the, the most high God. That's right. The most high God, his name is Yahweh. So because you don't uh, worship uh, Hashem Adama, Lama Dama, then you don't really know what the hell you're talking about. They say they're indigenous to this continent, but that's, I, I've never read any evidence saying that the migration, uh, you know, the migration patterns of human beings the black folks weren't here in the Americas first. They're the first humans. They're the first human beings on the planet because you know, mankind began in Africa. But in the Americas, there were very few black people. I've never heard of any evidence of there being any black folks until the slave trade in Christopher Columbus. They wanted to drown out the hatred that was being said to them. Right. And one of our teachers said it was okay for them to do their cheer. We wanted to drown out the hate, the hatred message that was being thrown at our children. Right, and so, uh, you know. Uh, okay, and uh, I hear you, I honor my God. We honor our God, brother. And that's what we are here to tell you what you have to do. You have to come away from the Lord. You have to come away from your religions. Online, the initial uh, reaction was, look at these guys in the MAGA hats, they're yelling at uh, this uh, Native American Nathan Phillips who is banging the drum, that's not true. So the black Israelites are a black supremacist group and they burn the shit out of those MAGA kids. They call them crackers, they call them incest babies, right? So they're sitting there saying because you're a southern, they also said you're going to be the future school shooters. They're being rude even with the names, hey Adam, hey there Billy, hey Tom. Just sitting there saying, like, you, uh, using your first name as a pejorative, right? So what would be the equivalent of racism towards white back towards the black Israelites? If those kids engaged in the same behavior that the black Israelites had engaged in, there would be no question that the media would have ripped them up. But how come the liberals don't say shit about the black Israelites who are racist as fuck? And there was even one moment when the black Israelite was sitting there saying, hey, let me tell you something, Donald Trump loves homosexuals. Your president is a homosexual. And he's sitting there being, you know, saying that homosexuality is wrong and it's bullshit. So what good is that? In fact, when the black Israelites told the MAGA hat crowd that homosexuality, that, you know, Donald Trump sucked because he's a homosexual, which, where the fuck did he get that shit from, right? He's got three different, anyways. Uh, so he's sitting there saying that Donald Trump is a homosexual. The MAGA hat crowd, they were, you know, gasped in disbelief. <gasps> Because I know y'all a little younger than me. So let me show y'all something. Stay back. Go on YouTube, right? And you have to look it up for yourself. Check this out. Probably gonna do that. I'm going to give y'all something. Check this out. Go on YouTube and look up Donald Trump kisses drag. You're going to see your president kiss Rudy Giuliani 
dressed in a drag on the lips. Your, your president is a homosexual. Who cares? I got no response. I got no Your president is a homosexual. No, we are. Donald Trump don't support that. And America is not a real country. Give fuck its rights. They're still you human. Are the children of Israel. How dare that's ugly. That's ugly. You sit there hating the homo you know, the homosexuals the way that you're hating them, that's ugly. So the MAGA hat people were neutral, nonviolent, and they're opposed to homosexual uh, homophobic bigots. That's pretty progressive. Philosophies and doctrines and start worshiping the true and living power, which which his name is Yahweh. That's who's the, the most high God. That's right. The most high God, his name is Yahweh. So while it looks that Nathan Phillips is the provocative, the provocateur, and the other kid, whatever his name was, he didn't do anything. The possibility of where he's going to go next. People are acting, you know, showed memes saying that he's going to be the next Kavanaugh in 40 different, in 40 years. <laughs> Now, there's some bad things that came out about Covington Catholic. There was a tweet that looked like it was from the kid's mother, but it wasn't. So you got to, you know, make sure that you discard the bullshit. But there's maybe two, maybe three photos that were disturbing. One photo was this kids. All these kids are, fashion, you know, flashing these signs. You know, this could be like the circle game if you see the circle, but they're showing it up into the air. It could be a three-pointer. I don't know exactly what that symbol means. Somebody said that it meant racism or white supremacists. So I can't tell. I'm not familiar with the hand gesture. Somebody also said that it was an asshole symbol in sign language. So I'm not for sure about that picture. But the other two pictures showed black face and black bodies. White people, you know, putting white face, black face, you know, on and then making their lips very white. So it looks menstrual. It doesn't look like they're trying to, you know, mimic black people exactly, but in exaggerated form. So this is only 10 to 20 years ago that these pictures popped out. So Covington Catholic is still known for having crazy fans at their basketball. Basketball is life. Basketball is a religion in Kentucky. So one photo shows blackface, about three kids in blackface yelling at this black kid who's throwing an inbounds pass in. And there is also an adult that seemed to be uh, going along with it. Well, that's sick. That's disturbing. And another picture had a bunch of bleachers full of these crazed fans with black faces and black bodies. They took off their shirts and painted their bodies black, too. So it's insulting because it's a minstrel show. Back in the day when black folks were uh, segregated or enslaved, there was minstrel shows where white people would uh, essentially make fun of black folks' demeanor. The way that black folks were, because they were subjugated, made them come out in the characters, and then the minstrel shows had exploited those characters, and they made a bunch of money. It was stereotypical, it was rude, it was insulting, and disrespectful. They did it for a laugh. That's right. Before you became an idol worshiper, you was worshiping the... So while I give the MAGA hat kid, the Covington Catholic kid, a pass, there was one video about them harassing some w women or girls that were walking by. So uh, to think that they were saying build the wall or some other crap, I'm not, you know. To and living God. And this is the reason why this land was taken away from you. But that video was before the thing. And also, the, you know, the black Israelites are sitting there hurling a bunch of insults as well. So the liberal media needs to criticize the black Israelites way more than what they have been, because racism is racism. And if you're going to sit there and say that the black Israelites are allowed to throw a bunch of racist shit and it was rude and disrespect, just the tone of their voice, really. You know, they didn't even have to speak any English, but the tone that they were speaking was, we don't like you, you're, you know, horrible people. We have freedom of speech here. Is that acceptable free speech? We're just sitting there yelling and cussing at each other. I feel like at some point it becomes harassment, right? So you're allowed to, you know, yell stuff at people, but you can't, like, follow them up and around and everywhere that they go. So even though I'm giving that MAGA boy a pass, I do want people to look at themselves. There is a racist strand, maybe 15, 20 percent in Kentucky. Those people are out there. They, you know, can't say 
uh, anything. They have to say the N-word after every other word that they speak. So there are plenty of white supremacists, backwards, you know, just uh, hilljacks, right? Just a bunch of hilljacks that just don't, backwards is their motto, backwardsness is their motto, and there's a culture of ignorance in Kentucky, too. Just look at Adolph Rupp. So UK is huge in uh, Kentucky. There's no professional teams in Kentucky, but there is UK basketball. Now, UK basketball, they play in the Rupp Arena, the Adolph Rupp Arena, who's named after the last college team that integrated their team, because Adolph Rupp is a racist piece of shit. So all the college teams are integrating, letting black people be part of the team, but not Adolph Rupp. Adolph Rupp fought, and he was the last college team to integrate. There's a Disney movie, actually, that's about it. And, you know, he's a racist piece of shit. So Adolph Rupp Arena is where the U.K. teams play. And most of the players on the U.K. basketball team are black. Louisville has the Waterston Expressway. Named after Henry Watterson. Henry Watterson helped them massacre all the black soldiers at Fort Pillow. There was also a Confederate statue at University of Louisville. It either is there or was there. I heard they were trying to take it down, but there was still a Confederate statue at U of L when I went there, just uh, you know, five years ago. <laughs> And then last but not least, you have a governor, Matt Bevin, who's the Donald Trump of Kentucky. So the Donald Trump of Kentucky had promised to take the Confederate statues out of the Capitol Rotunda after that Charleston massacre. So a kid goes into a church in South Carolina and then shoots nine people. And then everybody, the, Matt Bevin and, uh, you know, all the Republicans, Mitch McConnell, said that they're going to stop their racist ways and they're going to take the Confederate statues out of the Capitol Rotunda. But instead, we've protected the cap Confederate statue in the Capitol Rotunda in Frankfurt. So Matt Bevin is a liar. He's the Donald Trump of Kentucky. True, they were simply doing school cheers. You know, um, as a parent, I've got to wonder how you felt about in the initial hours after that went viral, uh, the your uh, school and the Diocese of Covington put out a statement that said, of your boys. Uh, action. They said this behavior is opposed to the church's teachings on the dignity and respect of the human person. The matter is being investigated and we will take appropriate action up to and including expulsion. Uh, why do you think the school and the diocese jumped the gun without knowing all the facts? Because that made it worse. It did. Matt Bevin has also passed some sort of executive order or some shit saying that Israel Kentucky is going to be Israel's bitch, too, and Palestine is to blame for everything that happens over there for that conflict. So Matt Bevin is taking a racist standpoint, right, because clearly the white Jews are doing good, and then the brown Palestinians are doing bad. So there is a culture of racism in Kentucky. Don't deny it. Don't blow it up bigger than what it actually is. And liberals, you've got to fucking get this shit right. This is just like the gun fucking argument. You, you, get, you jump on board this shit, the media tells you what to say, you spread all this shit out, now you got to defend a failing and wrong position. So the MAGA hat kid, let him go. Let the MAGA hat kid go. But stay on those kids. Make sure those kids don't turn out to be racist pieces of shit. So when you have a big group of MAGA hat kids, are they going to go play in a tree? Are they going to go help the community? What do you think of when you see a bunch of white, young white males in Donald Trump hats? Are they going to go around doing good for the community? Or are they going to just be a lynch mob? So just, you know, stay on them. Don't become a lynch mob. Be smart, individualistic, uh, question authority, question what's been thrown at you. The black Israelites were very racist to them, so I actually commend the Covington Catholic uh, crowd, boys, mostly boys. I think there was some, no, it's all boys school, so the Covington Catholic boys, they held their composure. They held their composure. They didn't get down in the mud with the shit. They weren't sitting there. You know, they were singing slogans from their school. So they had school spirit, and they were trying to, you know, rise above the fray while they were waiting at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial for their bus. Now, 
Uh, it took a while for white people to finally get into Kentucky. 1492 is when Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, right? Then 1500s, 1600s, and about 1780 is when the white people started to populate Kentucky, 1780. Now, all the propaganda says that Kentucky was completely absent of all Native Americans. It was just a big Garden of Eden with lots of rivers and streams and waterways and trees and forest and all the buffalo and food and pot, you know, it was a Garden of Eden. A ton, you know, just a big Garden of Eden, but there wasn't no Native Americans. Yeah, right. So that's some bullshit. In Covington, since it's right next to the Ohio River, there's lots of Indian burial grounds, arrowheads, and other Native American artifacts all along the Ohio River. So Covington would be a good spot to learn about the Native Americans who lived in Kentucky, the Kentuckyatic tribes. Because you swear on lies. You understand that? I got it. This is the hit. Let me show you. If this is not a real book, let me show you what the Bible says about your country. Give me that. Genesis 6. Check this out. They're not going to read this in the Catholic Church. They're not going to read this in your Christian church. Check this one out. The, I'm going to speak up. The Lord said he shall send us against a hypocritical nation. You make us swear on the Bible. You got on the back of the court system. And God we trust. On the back of your dollar bill, it says, and God we trust. But you get found its rights. Homosexuality. They're still human. Children of Israel. 